What's up guys? Justin here with thecgessentials.com back with another Blender animation tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to animate a transition between a shape and other shapes. So something like where a model morphs into another model. Like uh, for example we're going to animate our default model morphing into a couple different shapes. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in order to do this, we're gonna take our shape and we're gonna use what's known as a shape key. And so a shape key is, it, it's basically a function contained inside a blender that uh, that's built to help you transition um, vertex points in your model into other locations. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate between those in order to create a transition animation where our default model changes into a couple different shapes. So to start off, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add a modifier. I'm gonna go ahead and subdivide my default model so it's a little bit smoother. So maybe I'm gonna subdivide it by something like, we'll call it three for right now, just to make this a smoother model. And we're gonna go ahead and apply this. Um, that is one thing is generally speaking when you work with these shape keys, you want to make sure that you've applied any modifiers that are in here because you want this to work with the actual geometry of your shape. And so now that we've applied this, we can go ahead and we can animate the transition. And so what we want to do is we want to take this shape and we want to animate it transitioning into maybe a sphere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shift A in order to add a sphere. So we'll add a UV sphere right here. And we'll go ahead and we'll move our cursor right here. We'll move our selection to our cursor and we'll maybe scale it down a little bit. And so what we have is we have a sphere in the same location as our uh, default model. And so what I wanna do with my default model is I wanna add a modifier. And in this case, I wanna use the shrink wrap modifier. And so what this does is this allows us to take our model, so my default model in this case, and it allows us to shrink it into a shape like this one. So the way that's gonna work is with our target, we're gonna click on this, we're gonna click on our sphere. You can see how what that does, and we can hide the sphere. We don't really need that right now. You can see how what that does is that takes our model and it basically shrinks it so that the vertices follow um, the object that we've selected. So it shrinks everything down, and best as it can, it takes your geometry and it matches it up with the object that you select. So you can see how now, in here, our default model has turned into a sphere. And so what we need to do is we need to use what's known as a shape key, which I talked about a little bit. And basically what we wanna do is we wanna select the second object or the second option right here, which is called apply as shape key. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna apply this um, to our model. And so what that's done, if we scroll down into our object data properties, is now there's an option over here for shrink wrap under our shape keys option. So you can see now you have your basis, which is your original model, and then your shrink wrap, which in this case is gonna be our sphere um, with a value that you can select. So notice how when I do this, I can transition between my object and my sphere. And so now that we have that object, or now that we have that shrink wrap modifier and the shape that this is gonna turn into, we can keyframe um, the different transformations. So in order to do that, let's go over into our animation tab. And for right now, I'm not gonna worry about my camera. I'm going to rotate around maybe right here. And we're gonna select this option um, for our viewport shading. So we're gonna select material preview mode. And so now what we need to do is I want to set a keyframe for my shrink wrap modifier. So notice how right now um, there's nothing in my timeline. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna set a default value by going over to my shrink wrap modifier and clicking on this button right here. And what that does is that adds a keyframe for your shrink wrap value of zero. So at zero seconds, um, we have our shrink wrap set to zero. Now, at 60 seconds, what we wanna do is we wanna turn this up. So I'm gonna go over into our value we're gonna drag this over until it's fully, it's fully applied. And then we're gonna click on this button right here to add a second keyframe. And so what that's done, and you can see as I drag this slider, is that transitions our object between not shrink wrapped and shrink wrapped between zero and 60 seconds. So if I hit play, you can see how this transitions over those 60 seconds. And so what we can do from there is we could either export this animation. We'll talk a little bit about the materials in a second because it's not really changing the materials. And we want to adjust that so this doesn't look quite as weird. But I also want to add another shrink wrap modifier. What I want to do is I want to an animate a transition of this sphere turning into a cube. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go back to zero. 
we're going to go in here and we're going to apply another modifier. And first, we're going to add a cube. So I'm going to do a Shift A and add a cube. I'm going to scale it down like this. And then we'll just add another modifier. So shrink wrap. Whoops. And we want to make sure we're applying that to our default model, not to the cube that we added in here. So shrink wrap modifier, target cube. And you may need to go down and select nearest vertex on this one. Um, nearest surface point kind of takes this and it doesn't really transition this quite to the shape that you want. So what you want is you want these vertices to go to the nearest vertex point. Um, so nearest vertex will put these vertices on the corners. So it'll match up with the, the vertices of this shape. And so now we can turn off this other cube, look at this to make sure it looks the way we want and we can apply that as a shape key. So now if we were to go back into our object data properties, you can see how we have two shrink wrap modifiers in here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to, for our shrink wrap 001, we want to set that with a value of zero at the beginning. We also want to keyframe it with a value of zero right here. So you can see how this keyframe is set to zero on both of these. Well then at 120 seconds, what we want to do is we want to set this keyframe to one, but we also want to set our old shrink wrap modifier to zero because um, otherwise you've got both of these applying at once and it's doing really weird stuff to your vertices. So now what we have is we have a keyframe at zero with our default model. We have a keyframe at 60 frames with our sphere. We have a keyframe at 120 seconds with our box. And so that gives us a pretty good animation. If we were to take this and we were to click play, you can see how you get a transition between this sphere and between this cube. And so you could stop right there if you wanted to. One thing I want to talk a little bit about though is I also want to transition the material in here. So you know in in um so in Blender, you can really keyframe most anything. There are a few things you can't keyframe, but generally speaking, you can keyframe things like your materials. So what I want to do is I want to go in here and I actually want to add a keyframe for my different materials. So for my material one, what I want to do is I want to mouse over this base color and I want to tap the I key. And so when I mouse over my base color, what that does is that gives me a keyframe for my material. So now I want to go down here and I want to tap the I key and we're going to go ahead and insert keyframes for selected channels. And so you don't see anything right here, but if you look down inside of this, this has added a keyframe for your R, G, B, and A values. So what that means is that means we have a keyframe for this being a brown color. Then if I go over here to 60 seconds, I can change this value to all ones. Oh, I need to be under R, G, B, that's why. So we'll set that all to ones and then we'll do a, we'll tap I right here and we'll insert a keyframe for the selected channels. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to transition the RGB values of that color from their default right here to the new value right here. And notice how we need to do this for our other material as well. And we're probably going to have to do it with the third actually, because the third isn't a straight white. Um, so you can see how right here I have different shades of white on this sphere. So what I want to do is for material two, I want to add a base keyframe. And for material three, I want to add a base keyframe. So I just uh, select or moused over these and tap the I key in order to set these in here. And so now we can go ahead and we can add keyframes for all of those different colors at their defaults. Then I want to do the same thing over here where for this one, we want this to go to a one, one, one. We want to tap the I key to add a keyframe right there. So now we don't have this gold color anymore. This also transitions to a white. And then for the material two, we want to do the same thing. So at this point, we want this to be a one, one, and one. So I'll do an insert selected channels right here. So now this goes from this color to white. So now if we play our transition animation, we've got our model morphing into our object and we've got our object morphing into another object inside of Blender. 
And we could go ahead and set this to end at 120 frames. And so then before we export this, we want to go ahead and we want to go into our view. We want to lock our camera to our view. Then we want to hit the zero key in order to get into our camera view. Then we can use this to adjust our camera so that we have a good camera view of what's happening inside of this animation. And then just real quick, we can do a shift A and we can just add a sun. We can go ahead and point it at our object. Um, I'm not going to do too much with the lighting on this one. Maybe turn the strength up just a little bit. All right, so now let's go ahead and export this animation. So we can just go to our, uh, let's see, we want to go to the output properties. And then under output, you want to set this to export an FFmpeg video. We'll leave it on RGB. We'll leave the rest of this as is for right now. This isn't a very heavy scene, so we don't need to worry about this too much. So we can also set the folder where it's going to place these. And then once we set our folder, we can click on accept. We can go to render and we can click on render animation. And so this is going to go through and this is going to render out all of these frames and it's going to stitch them together. So we'll go ahead and let this work and then we'll come back and take a look at our final result. All right, so now if we open the file that's created, you can see how this is animating the transition between that object and this object. And so from there, you can use this to do a lot of different kinds of things. You could loop it. You could uh, basically work on it from there. But that gives you an idea of some of the things you can do with shape keys inside of Blender. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought was this helpful to you. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.